Welcome back to the Field of 68's off-season grades series. And today I have the pleasure of being joined by the one and only Jeff Goodman. Jeff, today we're going to talk about the Kansas Jayhawks. It's been uh, quite an off-season for the Jayhawks. Some high-end talents have departed. And then a lot of other guys also <laughs> departed. Not to throw any shots, but I'm not used to seeing eight, nine guys from a Kansas roster turn over. This year that happened. Grady Dick and Jalen Wilson are gone, but also Joseph Yesifu, MJ Rice, Bobby Pettiford, Cam Martin, Zach Clements, and Ernest Uday have all departed the program. However, they did get some big returnees. Kevin McCuller has opted back in for another year at Kansas. Dewan Harris is back. KJ Adams is back to build their core. And as far as new faces go, they've got some of the highest end portal new faces that any program in the country acquired this offseason. Hunter Dickinson being the big name, Arterio Morris, Nicholas Timberlake, and then El Marco Jackson and Jamari McDowell are the big recruits. So much change here, Jeff. For a program that has always been at the top of the Big 12, I don't know if change is necessarily a good thing, but this team is going to be extremely talented. Where does their offseason start for you? Well, first of all, there's only two players they lost that matter. Uh, Jalen Wilson and Grady Dick. The rest of them doesn't matter. Irrelevant. Irrelevant with what they brought back. Okay, so uh, to me, again, you knew you were going to lose Grady Dick for the most part uh, from the moment he stepped on campus. Uh, Jalen Wilson, we knew was gone as well because, uh, you know, he, he finished up there. But I, I thought, honestly, the biggest things were getting Hunter Dickinson, the best guy in the portal, or 1A or 1B, however you want to call it, and, and bringing back, um, to me, Kevin McCullough was huge, absolutely huge for me. Now, I will say this, Greg. I have Kansas preseason number one. I'm right. probably not going to move them from preseason number one, but I'm worried about my preseason number one. Very, very worried because <laughs> they do not shoot the ball well from the perimeter at all. So <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous <laughs> because they've they've got so much talent, and, and I think they could be an elite defensive team even with having Hunter Dickinson down low. Um, but they can get out and run. They can they can create opportunities. Again, you've got a, a, an elite defender in Dewan Harris, an elite defender in Kevin McCuller, uh, potentially two guys coming in in Arterio Morris and El Marco Jackson that can really get after it. But what do all four of those guys have in common? They can't shoot. They really can't shoot. Yeah. And KJ Adams can't really shoot. Their best shooter is Hunter Dickinson. <laughs> He's their best perimeter shooter. Like, legitimately. I'm not screwing around. Like he is their best three point shooter. What about Timberlake? Than I'll Timberlake. put. I'll push back on that. Timberlake's yeah, build as fine. the guy, right? Yeah, but yeah. but can Timberlake can Timberlake Greg get on the floor more than twenty minutes? Because what else can he do? Right. I well, I think he needs to. Is my answer right? Because that is what is preventing me from putting Kansas at number one. I will say I have them third at the top of okay. the country next year. I think it's a clear top three. I think you're picking between Kansas and Duke and Purdue. And I think Kansas right. and Purdue have the same problem. I mean, Purdue was a very bad shooting team last year. They bring everybody back, have a couple nice freshman ads, but I don't necessarily expect them to massively change the way they shoot the basketball. Kansas, to me, I, I, it's different, right? Because all the faces are new. And last year, they could really shoot the basketball. Anytime Grady Dick's on the floor, you're you're terrified of them from the perimeter. What makes me a little calmer about this roster and why I think they'll figure it out is because I do trust Dewan Harris. And anybody who listened to me last year can't believe I just said those words. I was all over skepticism of Dewan as a national title contending point guard last year. This year, I'm in. I mean, I, I thought he really made some strides over the course of the season when Kansas had their struggles in conference play. He was almost afraid to shoot the basketball. And then he really found a rhythm in the second half of Big 12 play. And I think we saw signs of a really versatile guy who can do more than just facilitate for others. Um, I, the big question was shooting to me is KJ Adams and Hunter. Is the plan to play those two together for 30 minutes? Because I have experience, Jeff, you know this. I have quite a bit of experience watching Hunter Dickinson get grumpy yeah. next to guys who can't shoot the ball. Yeah, I mean, I think they'll play together at times, and they're hoping K.J. Adams can can step out a little bit and make 15-footers. Uh, I could also see them playing small ball. 
uh, a little bit with Hunter around four guys that can, um, you know, that can, that can really go. So I, I don't know if Bill Self understands yet how they're going to play. I, I think, again, the biggest issue is going to be he's got to play with shooters on the floor. And if if DeWan Harris, you know, I remember talking to, to Self last year before the season. He said, I need DeWan Harris to make one out of three every game. And, and I think he shot a better percentage. I don't even know what it was, but I think he shot a decent percentage from three last year. Mm-hmm. He just didn't – he went through stretches, right? Like he'd make a bunch, then he wouldn't shoot at all. And, uh, you know, McCuller, he'd have some days where he'd make a couple, other days where he'd bang the backboard a couple of times. So the side of the backboard, not even the front of the backboard, the side of the backboard. Uh, so I, I think, again, you know, here, here's my deal is is in Bill Self I trust. And, and that's why I have him ahead of Duke. That's why I have him ahead of Purdue. I, I just think Bill Self is going to figure it out. He's a Hall of Fame coach. He's got the talent. He's got the experience. The only thing he doesn't have is shooting. I think he can manufacture points and be an elite defensive team. The one other thing I will just say, again, speaking from experience as someone who has watched this player, I think I buy Kansas much more as they'll win a championship if Hunter Dickinson is not the best player on this team. And well, I don't he's know who be the best player, but he's well, going to be. If he's not, not the best player, Greg, they're not going to be good enough. They're not. So here's here's why I push back. I think it could be Harris. I really do. I think there could be a jump in his here. own way. That's fine. In his own way, averaging eight points a game or ten points a game. Oh, I think he could do more than that. I really well, do. Um, now he has to do it, right? It has to be a jump. But if Kansas really is going to roll out Hunter and expect twenty and ten from him night to night, that's just not who he's ever been able to be over the course of his career. Now, uh, like when you add it all up at the end of the season, the numbers are going to look fine. He's talented as hell. He's arguably the best big in the country coming into this year. But he is not a guy who can lead a basketball team that's been proven, even though he's had really talented rosters at Michigan. Now, can he be the best player while Harris is the leader? Sure. Bill Self is smart enough to figure it out. I know that. Uh, I just think if there is a way for somebody to emerge, whether it's one of the vets, whether it's somebody else they brought in that can put some pressure off of Hunter Dickinson and let him kind of be the B guy to somebody else's A, I really like this roster. What's your expectation for this group? Because you said uh, you've got him number one but you don't necessarily feel great about it. Is it national title or bust this season for Kansas? I think they'll win the big 12. I think they will be a dominant team in the regular season. Really, really good. And then I worry about them having a two for 17, three point performance in the NCAA tournament and getting knocked out. That's what I worry about. And to me, can they win grinders? Cause they're going to have one of those, maybe two of those in the NCAA tournament. If they're going to want to get to like the, the championship game, and to me, are you tough enough? And I think they are for the most part. But again, it is a group of Dewan Harris, McCuller, Adams, Dickinson, and Timberlake, let's say, or El Marco or Arturian Morris, whoever you want to throw in that last spot. Uh, are they are they are they gonna be good enough? Are they gonna make enough shots? And if they don't, if Timberlake doesn't make shots, he's not on the court. Let's yeah. face it, he's not gonna be on the court. If he doesn't make shots, because you're going to go with, with our Terry Morris, who has looked really good from what I've heard so far in the summer in terms of, again, like that dude can get downhill. Nobody was hiring our Terry Morris coming out of high school than, than me. Uh, talent wise, the, the question is, again, can he be a, a, a dynamic, like defensive player, him and a Marco Jackson, that they can get out in the passing lanes, get out and, and pressure guys and create some offense off their defense. If they can do that, again, it's kind of a difference maker type thing because they'll be able to get out in transition and they'll get open looks from, from, from guys spotting up from three. Yeah. I don't think anyone's ever going to sit and face a camera and say that the expectation at Kansas is anything less than championships. To me, they have the best roster in this conference on paper. They arguably have the best roster in the country on paper. Again, I have them third. They're clearly in that group of three where you can debate all day. Uh, it's got to be championship or bust, maybe not national championship or bust, but I-, I think this team should definitely have final four dreams and it's real and it's appropriate for that. Um, who would your X factor be? You spoke to Morris. You loved him out of high school. Timberlake's obviously critical to what they need. If you had to identify one thing for this team, what would that X factor be? Probably Timberlake shooting. Yeah. I think it's Timberlake shooting. If, if, if he can get 28 minutes 
and be a 40 plus percent three point shooter at this level. That's what they, they have to have that. They honestly, if they don't have that, if Timberlake's not in the court, he plays 15 minutes a game or shoots 32% from three somehow, which I don't think he'll shoot that bad. But let's say he's not the shooter he proved last year at Towson, then you're in trouble. Then you're in trouble. Yeah, I think that's the correct one. And just for the sake of diversity, I'll throw a second one out. I think Kevin McCullough is the guy I'm most curious about this season because he really had, a, I don't want to say easy role, but the ask of him was small enough last year yeah. that Kansas could get by with some inconsistencies because you knew what you were getting from Grady Dick and Jalen Wilson night in and night out. I'm very curious if McCuller can now take that next step to being an all Big 12 first team guy on the wing. I do think there are nights where he has shown he's capable of that, both offensively and defensively, but it's about consistency. And he's going to have every opportunity this year because he's not going to come off the floor unless Timberlake is a superstar uh, as far as shooting the basketball goes. All right, let's give them a grade. Jeff, what is your grade for the Jayhawks offseason? I mean, I think you got to give it. Shoot, I mean, as close to an A as you can. They got the best transfer in the portal. They got Arteria Morris, who's a stud talent. Uh, they kept the freshman that they wanted to keep, El Marco Jackson. He was the one they wanted to keep more than any. Chris Johnson, obviously. You know, a couple of their guys decommitted, basically got out of their letters because they knew they weren't going to play. And it was a numbers game once they started to bring back, especially when they brought back McCullough. So they've got experience. They've got toughness. They've got defense. They've got a stud big man. Um, actually, I'm not going to give him an A. I'm not. I'm not going to give him an A. Oh. I'm going to give him. I'm going to give him a B plus because they didn't get another shooter, and and I think that might cost them ultimately a chance to cut down the nets and win a national title. So I'm going to give him a B plus because I really felt like they they needed to get one more shooter beyond Timberlake. I like that grade. That is my grade as well. B plus. And I don't know if you know this or not, but I've done 10 of these with Rob and I'm a notoriously harsh grader. Apparently that's what he tells me. Uh, I, I do. I think there's still a lack of shooting on this roster. And I wish I could say like 100 out of 100. I was confident that Timberlake could fill that gap. I'm just not like I think there is a world where he becomes unplayable for this team. I hope it doesn't happen because everything else has the makings of a really special season. Um, but outside of that, I mean, you got the best player in the portal. That alone was going to take you up to a, a B level range. And the only other thing I would say, you you basically wrote off everybody at the beginning of this video, said none of these guys matter outside of Dick and Wilson. Yeah. For some reason, for me, it, it feels like it kind of matters because I don't feel like this team is particularly deep. And I don't know if that's going to come back to bite them ever. There's not a single name I would pick out and yeah, say. But like they Parker Brown, guy. Parker Brown is your is your backup big. He's fine as that, right? He played at Santa Clara. He's a grad. He can he can shoot a little bit. Like he'll be fine and he'll be okay with his role, Greg. So like, I, I think. Again, but are they going seven deep? Like, is that the plan? Well, you got what Harris, McCuller, Hunter, Timberlake, Adams, Morris. El Marco Brown. That's that's eight, right? Okay. Is that eight? That's that eight? eight. That's eight. Yeah. That's okay. eight right there. I I mean, again, yeah, you're like, you're not probably playing much more than eight. Like, you know, can you play Jamari McDowell a little bit? Maybe, but like you're playing eight when it matters. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they got in that weird spot too, where like all the guys who left were prestigious guys who expected minutes, knew they weren't going to get minutes. That's a tough right. cycle to get out of. I just think there will be a moment this season. I don't know when it'll be, but I think there will be a moment this season where they look at their bench like shit. We've got six guys we want to play today, and that's a little scary because they are Kansas. And they're going to say they, we miss Zuby. That's what they're going right. to end up saying, Greg. They're going to look down the bench and say we really miss Zuby. It might happen, Jeff. All right, B pluses all around from us here at the Field of Sixty Eight. If you want our entire off-season grade series, you can find that on our YouTube channel. We're doing this for every preseason top twenty-five team and fifteen others that we hand selected for your viewing pleasure. For Jeff Goodman, my name is Greg Waddell. We'll see you next time. Our partner for today's episode is Athletic Greens. I started taking AG1 during the college basketball season, and I loved the impact that it had on my energy levels. I'm a big coffee in the morning guy, but by the time that the afternoon would hit, I needed another boost. AG1 helped me tremendously, especially on those days when I didn't want to get up off the couch and go hit the gym. Their tagline is, AG1 is comprehensive health and the power of habit in one. And man, that could not be more 
true. It's nearly impossible to eat and drink in a healthy manner in the month of February and the month of March when you are in my business. And AG1 was exactly the supplement that I needed to improve my gut health and cover my nutritional bases for the day. I've continued that into April. I've continued that into May, and I'm going to continue that the rest of the summer. All I have to do is mix a scoop of AG1 with some water or maybe add it into a smoothie and I'm ready to go. Do it after lunch and you'll be ready to go for the rest of the day. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com backslash field68. That's field68, F-I-E-L-D, the number six, the number eight, and you can get yours now. So check it out and help support this show. Thanks.